enter into the law of gravity. And if you would sow in this moment, you'll enter into the law of harvest. Because a seed will leave your hand, but it will not leave your life. And I know that many of times we are operating in toil because we don't have principle alongside our effort. But if you want to operate with increase, then you will tap into the principles of the kingdom and you will sow into good ground. And whatsoever a man soweth, that very thing he will reap. This is good ground. This is sacrificial ground. This is anointed ground. This is flourishing ground. This is kingdom ground. And this is a moment to sow. So I ask that you would get your best seed. We don't conjure up seeds. We just offer you a moment. A moment to sow into the kingdom of God. Bring your best seed today. Bring your sacrifice today into the kingdom. And if you want to sow today, if you are willing to sow to activate this moment, you can sow by PayPal or Zelle, Christy Dobbins at Yahoo.com, Cash App, dollar sign Christy Dobbins, and also Venmo, Christy Dash Dobbins. This is your opportunity, and I just want to take this time to pray over your seed. Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the moment to tap into the law of sowing and reaping. We thank you for a moment of activation. We thank you for your kingdom. We thank you that you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And we're sowing today by faith that this seed will be sown into good ground and will leave our hand and not our life. And you will manifest the harvest according to your own will and your own glory and your own power. And we praise you in advance for it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. we've had our chance to sow I just want you to know that we're coming into a moment of power a moment of glory because a preacher is in the building a prophet is in the building a word is in the building truth is in the building revelation is in the building Elder Christy Dobbins is in the building and she brings the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. She brings the anointing that destroys the yoke. She brings the truth that manifests the kingdom. She walks in power. She brings the glory. There will be a demonstration. The spirit back. She sacrifices. She teaches with power. When she walks in the room, there's a shift. She can sense and survey atmospheres. When she preaches, hell gets nervous. She's seasoned in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. She's the wife of none other, Pastor Ben Shardon. She's a mother. she can hold the pulpit down. So I welcome to you the one and only Elder Christy Dobbins. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Elder Tawanji, for that introduction. Can't nobody introduce a preacher like a preacher. That's what she just did, a sermonette in her, in her intro.
said, I am doing something you all never see me do before, stand up here with a laptop. So we don't even know what the Lord is going to do today. I, I thank all of you for coming. I thank um, everyone that is tuning in, whether you're tuning in um, in person, whether you're tuning in uh, online. I understand that um, uh, we all may want to be in the building, but um, still during this season, we are practicing wisdom. And you know, it's interesting that <clears throat> wisdom and faith are not opposite of one another. They're never in conflict. They walk alongside with one another. So while we're walking in wisdom and walking in faith, uh, we are trying to do what we can to keep the people of the Lord safe. But it, it did impress upon my heart, the Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart back in, in August that me and my core team were to start convening again and having service, uh, even though we would still be virtually, um, in, in order to be spiritual midwives as such. Uh, sometimes <clears throat> during this during this pandemic, many of us have begun to watch church online much like we watch Netflix. And how uh, many people binge watch uh, different shows on Netflix to catch up. I have observed that many binge watch church now that we're in this day and time. And while it's a good thing um, to to absorb and to want and desire the word of God, you have to always be careful that you're not taking more in than you're releasing out. When God gives you a word, it is not just for you. It is to be worked out through you, and then you are to walk it out in your life and then help someone walk it out in their life. The kingdom of God was never about one person. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the kingdom of God is about the body of Christ. And so whatever I get, whatever you get, it is not just for me. It is not just for you, but it is for the kingdom of God. And so we stand here before you today um, as, as I, as I um, went back and forth in my spirit of what we were going to talk about today, the Holy Spirit impressed upon me um, and reminded me that it was a few years ago that he began to talk to me about the benefit of repetition. For those of you who have uh, been hearing me talk a lot, particularly during this season, we are now consumers of so much information, and we try to consume revelation like we consume information, but it's just not possible because the only way to consume revelation is through the Spirit of God. It is not through my natural mind. It is not through my carnal mind. It is not through my intellectual capabilities or my intellectual prowess, but it is through the spirit of God. The Bible tells us God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It starts off letting us know that we cannot worship God uh, without being in the spirit, the spirit and truth. And so he began to talk to me about repetition. As I began to receive prayer requests, and just as we started this morning, and I received many prayer requests, uh, even on IG, of people who are, are needing uh, just hope and healing in their lives, I, 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 I don't want to be guilty of being so consumed with me that I forget about my brother and sister. See, I came up in the old church, and the old church, and the old church was small, but that was okay. When anyone in the church went through, we all walked through that with them together. They were not isolated. If, if they didn't show up in two or three Sundays, somebody went to their house to see what was wrong, whatever you needed, we rallied around one another to try to provide that. And so that is really what the Lord, even before we went into the pandemic, began to talk to me last year, I believe it was December, that I mentioned bearing ye one another's burdens. And so as I was preparing for today, the Lord reminded me of what he said to me about repetition and that the more you hear something, that repetition is a learning tool that causes something to move from your conscious to your subconscious. Meaning by the time you've heard it over and over again, you no longer have to think about it or a word that young people like to say, there's no need to process it. You just go into what you already know. And so repetition will help you uh, expedite, 
if you will, uh, and expedite in the kingdom of God. And what I mean by that is it will save you the time. It's, it's a new, it's a new, I, I'm going to say this jokingly, but it's true. It's a new demon out there called overthinking. And that, that strategy of the enemy has kept people paralyzed. They overthink and overthink and overthink and they, they and overthink to the point that they never make decisions. And the enemy is keeping them through indecisiveness and overthinking, much like the children of Israel going around the same mountain over and over. But repetition will help you destroy overthinking because once you know that you know that you know, then out of your spirit, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters and you're no longer thinking, you're actually walking by the spirit see when you're thinking you're not in the spirit because see we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh it is my flesh my carnal mind that is when I am thinking but we want to mature into walking after the spirit where we understand that the spirit knows more than what our intellect or our mind can even comprehend I've said this for years the Holy Spirit is the most intelligent person on the planet if you have not consulted with him, you've not gotten the greatest wisdom. You've not gotten the greatest strategist. You've not accessed the greatest power. The Holy Ghost is the most intelligent, the most powerful person on the planet. He is a person. He is not a it. He is not a that. He is not a something. He is the Holy Ghost. One third of the Godhead. I said all that to say that the Lord reminded me that we are still in a fight. And I was, I was actually going back and forth about this because I remember preaching on fighting uh, at Closing the Gap in 2018. And then I remember in, in January of 2019, God said, still fighting. And now here we are in 2020, and the Holy Spirit said, we're still in the fight. And he's begin to say, you know, we need to go back and understand what the fight is all about. And, and you know, I, I like to give definitions, but many of us know what a fight is. A fight is just a struggle. It's a violent, some definitions say a violent struggle. It's a contest between oppositional forces. And so when you became uh, a Christian, when you accepted Jesus as your savior, and I don't know who needs to help my mic right now or if they're um, fine tuning my mic, but I'm getting um, in, my, in my ear, I'm getting a background. It's coming back in my ear. But when you became a Christian, you automatically enlisted in a fight. There is a fight that has been going on since eternity between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. There is a fight that has been existing between God and an inferior opponent. And the inferior opponent is the enemy. And this fight has been going on for so long and yet the inferior imp opponent who is the devil already knows his expected end. He already knows where he will end. He already knows he's been defeated. He already knows all of these things. But his assignment in this earth is to draw you in to get you to go along with him. And even those of us that have accepted Jesus and that we know that our salvation is secure, his assignment is to make you live live like hell on earth. He will make you be a, 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 I can say it this way, a believer who lives like a sinner. That's his assignment. And, and I don't want you to get put off by that because I don't mean a believer who's out doing all the list of sins. It's a believer who doesn't believe. I don't know if you heard that. A believer who doesn't believe. You believe that Jesus died for your sins, yet you don't believe he can heal your body. You believe that you're going to heaven, yet you don't believe that he has the power to destroy every generational curse. You believe that you're going to heaven, but you don't believe that you are going to live in victory on this earth. It is a, his assignment to keep you living low. Not just low in sin, low in in your existence, low in how you manifest the kingdom of God in this earth. So we're going back to a familiar passage of scripture 
to Ephesians chapter 6. And it is a familiar passage of scripture. So I pray that the wind of the Holy Spirit would blow on this word so you would receive with meekness an engrafted word that is able to save your soul. Translation, that you will receive something that sticks in your spirit, that you are able to apply to your life when you walk out. I want to tell you, if you heard the first part, the Lord is going to send the word, but you've got to do the applying. This is not, this is not, salvation is not, a, uh, it, it's not like you just wait on God to do everything. No, God has already done everything. He is wait, waiting for us to work out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling so that we can access everything that has been left for us. So the Lord is going to send instruction today, and the Lord is going to send wisdom today. But it is up to you to apply that wisdom. It is up to you to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. It is up to you to surrender and submit to God. See, we don't understand that oftentimes when we are not obedient to the scripture, we don't realize it puts us in opposition to God. The Bible says submit to God. When we do not submit to God, it is an act of disobedience. And so a lot of us have to go back and repent for all the times that we did not submit to God. God, I made this choice and I didn't submit to you. Uh, the, the old church used to always emphasize resisting the devil, but the, it starts off with submitting to God. You cannot resist the devil until you have submitted to God. You have, cannot access the power of God to resist the devil until you have submitted your power under his power. Your authority under his authority. We're teaching today. We might preach, but today we're teaching because we want you to have the tools to be effective in this day and time. And the Holy Spirit is going to send what you need, but I cannot emphasize it enough. It is up to you to grab it and to apply it. When we talk about fighting, we, we, we know here... Uh, in America that boxing is a sport and I'm not going to talk about boxing so don't worry about it because I don't really know everybody knows when I give sports analogies it's football but it's interesting that we made a sport of something that's so violent it's interesting that it's something about human uh, mankind that enjoys seeing one opponent outdo another opponent at any expense. It's interesting that something about the flesh uh, causes us to be excited to see who can go the longest amount of time without being defeated. That's not just in boxing. That's just in, I was watching the news last night, and they were talking about Allen, Texas, high school football team, the high school football team, that they are 54 at, and 0 at home in their new stadium, that they have not lost 54 games, 54. They are undefeated at home. Oh, we're going somewhere with this, because you in a fight. Uh, and, and so it's interesting that we all enjoy watching a good fight. Remember when you were little and there was a fight on the playground? Everybody ran to the fight. Everybody ran to see, and then when they left, they all had their own accounts of who won the fight and what this one did and what that one did. And I just want you to bring that childhood memory to the forefront of your mind and understand that you are still in a fight and that the enemy is still, the enemy of your soul is still having some of us on the playground fighting like we did in elementary school. We have not even graduated to middle school and high school and to college. We're still in those fights on the playground where we're just flailing our arms. We're not landing any punches. We're just fighting because we're immature. When you're younger, you just fight because the crowd can provoke you into fighting. The fight, I was that instigator. Oh, Lord, I didn't mean to tell this testimony. Today, I was that instigator. If you talk too much, I'm going to say, girl, did you hear what she said? Did, are you going to take it? Let, you better do something about that. That's actually what the devil and his imps have been doing, though. They've been instigating, and they've been backing some of us up into a corner. And the Lord is sending you help today. We're in individual fights. But as the body of Christ, we're in a fight. 
for the identity of who we are in this earth. We're in a fight to manifest the kingdom of God in this earth. We're in a fight. So when we talk about fighting, we understand that the Apostle Paul, that fighting is part of what we do as believers. The Apostle Paul says that I have fought a good fight. And we understand when he says that he fought a good fight, it is because the fight is a fight of faith. I believe in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 lets us know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers uh, and rulers and all of this. And so here we are understanding that our fight is not in the natural, that our fight is in the spirit. But that is actually why the enemy has been winning. We've been equipped to fight in the natural. All my life I had to fight. But yet when we get to the spirit, many of us are not equipped to fight. I'm spending time talking about this fighting because I understand uh, I've never been to the military. So I'm getting ready to give a lot of illustrations that I have no experience. But part of what they do when you go to the military, because you are actually joining to ultimately defend this country, when you join, you understand that there may be a time that they call on you to fight. You don't get to choose if you go. You don't get to decide when you go. There may be a time abruptly that you are called out of the middle of the night and that you are now discharged and said, you have to go fight. So in order to prepare you for that, they remove you from your circumstances and your environment that is comfortable and familiar, and they send you to basic training, and they put you in their environment, and they put you in their clothes, and they put, give you their food, and they give you their routine, and they train you according to their art of war so that you can be skilled when it's time to go fight. They put you in an environment that separates you and isolates you from everything that was familiar to you. They put you in an environment that now, for many people, requires responsibility of you that you never had. You have to get up at a certain time. You have to make your bed a certain way. You have to wear certain clothing. They, they reprogram you. It's not voluntary because you have to pass basic training in order to continue in whichever branch of the military that you joined. Oftentimes I believe and I say, if we just didn't have so much choice. See, God gave us the choice. He says, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Actually, you choose that every day. That's not just about your salvation. When you wake up all day, every day and you haven't read your word all day and you just been in your carnal mind all day, you chose that day who you serve. Every day you're choosing who you're going to serve. When you skip prayer, when you skip fasting, when you skip fellowship with God, you are choosing that day whom you're going to serve. But the military doesn't give you a choice. They give you rank and file, and they tell you who you have to answer to. And sometimes they have to break you down. They've gotten a little less rigid these days. But, uh, but back in the day, they would break you down and deprogram you from how you thought before you came in and give you a military mindset. Which is why when most people back in the day would come home from or retire from the military, they were the most prompt, they were the most disciplined, they were, mo they were the most, uh, they were what we would call in the spirit fruitful because they had been trained and they had been disciplined. And see what God has done is allowed you to choose whether you're going to discipline yourself. So that's why we have Christians who are going to heaven but have no victory on earth because we are the, the, the least disciplined of almost any religion. The Muslims get up five times a day and pray. Their God doesn't even talk back like our God. When kids are raised in Judaism, they have to have learned the Torah by a certain age. Our children know more rap songs than they know scripture. Oh, I'm going to say that again because it's quiet in here. Our children know more rap songs than they know scripture. 
Therefore, when they get in a crisis, it is not the word of God that comes out of them because it was not trained and put in them. When your children are zero to nine in their formidable years, that is the critical time of their life for you to deposit everything. Over half the scriptures I know today, I knew them by the time I was 10. Train up a child. Train up a child. So that when he is old, he won't depart. It didn't say in the middle he wouldn't stray. But it's something about the seed and the deposit of the word that you put down in him. It's what's going to pull him back. That's why I know. I understand. I, I understand that I backslid for a while in my 20s. But it was the seed of the word. It wasn't just who I am. No, God came for his word because he has fidelity to his word. He had too much word left in me to leave me in the club. He had too much word left in me to leave me running in the streets. He had too much word and he has fidelity to his word. His word will not return it to him void. And one day he came for his word. We say he came for us. No, he came for his word. He came for the logos and he came for the prophetic word that was over my life. He came for his word. He said, oh, it's on this day that now she's going to do a turn. And she's coming back to me because I'm coming for my word. So I'm telling you, when my children went off to college and I start wondering what you're doing, what you're doing, where you're doing it, how you do it, the Lord began to say, I saved you. I pulled you out the club. I pulled you out the one way in, one way out. They in there shooting you should have died club. I pulled you out. I pulled you out because you was green and you didn't even know some of the circumstances you in. Oh my God, I can't tell that full testimony. I'm lying. You don't even understand some of the stuff you in. Somebody would have went to jail, but you was in the car that night. And I had fidelity to my word. <laughs> oh, you don't understand what I'm talking about. See, these are one of those times when closing the gap used to be closed so I could throw it all out there and fillet it on the table for you. But sometimes God spared them because you were in the car. He has fidelity to his word. Hallelujah. This fight that we're in is fixed. But the problem is, we got to make it to the end. Elder Tawanji, we believe it's fixed at the end. We just don't believe that we have victory in the beginning. We have not developed our faith to the point where we walk by faith and not by sight. Therefore, all the enemy has to do is show us something and it gets us off course because we have been so conditioned to look at what we see. Peter, stop looking down at the water. I told you to come. I told you to step out on the water. But we're conditioned to look at what we see Yet we need to be reprogrammed to understand that we walk by faith and not by sight. To understand that God has fidelity to his word. When I was looking at Ephesians chapter 6, and I quoted that wrong earlier, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, thank you Holy Spirit. That's casting down imaginations and every high thing. Uh, but when I start looking at Ephesians 6, it starts off saying in verse 10, finally, my brethren. And it's interesting that a lot of times when we read scripture, we don't read it in the context, not just even of that chapter, but of the whole book. And that when, Jesus, when, when Apostle Paul is writing here now to the church of Ephesus, which is the church he planted, but it is the church Timothy pastored. He was the apostle who planted the church. But Timothy, he set Timothy, his mentee in position, to pastor the church. That's why he had to write unto Timothy in First and Second Timothy and give Timothy his charge of what he expected of him because Timothy was left in control of the church of Ephesus. 
But by the time we get here, the Apostle Paul has talked about many things. So by the time we get to this, finally, you have to really know what he said in the beginning. And I don't have time to go through everything that he said in the beginning. But what I want you to understand is sometimes you have to go back after not just my sermon, even your pastor's sermon, and read the totality so that you can receive all that God has for you. Many people would not be led astray <laughs> by the pulpit if they went and studied to show themselves approved. That scripture wasn't written just for preachers. We need to all study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I don't know why I'm preaching so hard already. But he begins to say, finally. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And I want to I emphasize here verse 10. Because as I begin to study this this time, what jumped out to me is that generally we all skip to put on the whole armor of God. But before you can put on the whole armor of God, you've got to be strong in the power of his might. Much like when Jesus told, when, when God told Joshua back in the book of Joshua to be thou strong and courageous. In order to even put on the armor of God, you have got to be strong in the power of his might. Which is why I started off talking about those disciplines. There are certain disciplines that you need. You need to be strong in the spirit. You need to be walking after the spirit. You need to deny your flesh deny your flesh pick up your cross and follow him before you put on your armor you've got to be strong not in your strength but in the power of his might and I want to read something to you the power of his might um, is something you have to work through you can't just, you know, I, I understand we have that blabbing and grabbing generation. You can't just speak that you are in the power of his might. It is actually according to you disciplining yourself in the spirit. How do I discipline myself in the spirit? You're reading your Bible. You're studying your word. You're praying. You're fasting. You're doing all of these things um, to walk after the spirit so that you can be strong in the power of his might. But I want to give you one of the definitions that it says about might. Might is like is it an inherent power or a force. So I want you to understand when it says be strong in the power of his might, well might in and of itself is um, it's an inherent power or force. So I want you to visualize this. This is the example that I read. I didn't come up with this example. It's one that I read. It's like a man being really muscular. You can look at him and see how much might he has. But it is not until he does something that you know how much the power of his might is. I need you to catch that again. You can see that Papa and Bluto, let's go back to the old school, that one looked big, but because Popeye wasn't strong in his own power, am I, am I going to preach Popeye today? In his own power, he had to access another power. He now became strong in the power of its might. So when you look at someone who's big and built and you can say, oh, they're strong, they're powerful, but it is not until you see them do something that you understand what their power looks like. You have got to be strong in the power of his might, which means you have to do something. You have to do something. You don't need his power to sit at home. You don't need his power to do what you have the ability to do. You don't need his power to do what you can do in your own strength. You need his power to do that which he has called you to do. And if what he's called you to do, you can do it in your, your own strength, I submit to you he didn't call you to do it. Because everything he called us to do, we need the power of his might to do it. Everything. Everything. So that you cannot get prideful. So that you cannot think more highly of yourself than you ought. God will show you that without your power, his power, you will fail. 
some of the choices and some of the consequences of our choices are a result of God having to show us what it looks like in the power of our own might. So you have to first be strong in the power of his might. You have to first understand that you need access to his power. You have to understand also you need his power and you need the authority of Jesus to do whatever God has called you to do. Right now we are in warfare. We don't understand that we're in warfare and sometimes we say that Elder Tawanji when things are going wrong but I need you to know there is never a time that light is not warring against darkness and darkness is not warring against light. If you're looking at your bank account to decide whether or not you got warfare, you're looking in the wrong place. If that's your barometer of whether or not you are in warfare, we are always at war with darkness if I am really of the kingdom of light. Whenever you think something is going right, you better tap into the spirit and let the Lord show you what's coming. Let the Lord show you what the plot, what the plot of the enemy is. Don't ever get too comfortable that you think you're not in a fight. Okay. See, some of us are not in a fight because the devil can't tell whose side we're on. We proclaim Lord, Lord with our mouth. But our lifestyle doesn't reflect that it's a threat to the enemy's camp. <laughs> Nothing about us is a threat to him. So he doesn't even bother you because actually he has lulled you to sleep. And so once you are lulled to sleep, you are of no concern to him because you are not even an opponent that's going to come out. It's almost like you're forfeiting your game. You're forfeiting the victory. You're throwing in the towel. And the enemy doesn't even have to come against you. Listen, be strong in the power of his might. So it says be first be strong in the Lord and then in the power of his might. The scripture also says his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So you have to understand that when you are weak, you are in the perfect position to access his strength. Stop allowing the enemy to tell you his weak, you're weak, and what you do is go to God and say, I am weak, now make me strong. I am weak. I need your strength because your strength is made perfect in my weakness. I'm not talking about the weakness of to your flesh where you're running in and out of sin. I'm talking about when you think you're too weak to fight against the enemy. I want you to access Access the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Let's start right there. There is another verb. Put on. You have to put it on. Listen, Pastor Josh and Misi are back there. They have a baby who's about four months old. And due to his level of maturity, they have to put on his clothes. But there will come a season and time that they will lay his clothes out in a couple of years and tell him to put on his own clothes because he will be mature enough to put on his own clothes. God is not putting your clothes on for you this morning. He is telling you to put it on. He is telling you that if you want to fight, I have given you all the tools to fight, but you have to put it on. I've been saying this for months now. <laughs> This, this Christianity requires your participation. Okay, they didn't hear me. Just give me a run. They didn't hear me. Give me an amen on the organ. Hallelujah. Because it's going to require your participation. I, I have to apologize to you because we have fed you a gospel that made you think it's about you. But this gospel is not about you. It's about the kingdom. We've made you think it was about your purpose. It was about your business. It was about your marriage. It was about all these things. We've made you think the Bible was written for you. When the Bible was written for the body of Christ to understand who God is and how God's ways are and his character of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. 
that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So right there, that word wiles means schemes, his tricks. You might be able to stand. If you don't put it on, you won't stand. It's that simple. If you don't put on the armor, you will not be able to stand against the schemes of the enemy. And listen, the enemy is not a creator of anything new. He brings the same tricks over and over and over again, but in your own strength, you still can't whip the devil. That's why I don't do what I hear some people do. I don't say, Satan, I rebuke thee. No, 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 because Christy Dobbins is nobody. Oh, but Satan, the Lord rebuke thee. And when the Lord rebukes you, you get in your place. Hallelujah. 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 Put on. The whole armor. I have to address that whole because somebody keeps getting half dressed. Somebody keeps getting up and thinking if you do this part that you're half dressed. And you're wondering why you did read and you did pray, but you was half dressed. You didn't get up and put on the whole armor. You didn't get up and do all that he told you to do. You weren't diligent about his commandments. Put on the whole armor, the whole armor. It would be like me standing here, and what would it look like if I stood here to preach and I didn't have no bottoms on, just the top? That's what some of the Christians look like. And you go out half-dressed, and the enemy hits you in the part that is not covered. Put on the whole armor, the whole armor, the whole armor of God. It is going to require, <laughs> I'm going to keep saying it until you get it, your participation. Put on the whole armor that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against principalities. Put on the whole armor of God. You know, when, we, when, this, when the Bible starts talking about principalities and power, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. I want you to see that. Principalities against powers, against the rulers of darkness, and then he, and then he names against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Those are ranks. Those are ranks. They get higher and higher. That's why the last one says spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in places of authority. Spiritual wickedness and wickedness in places that are making decisions for your life and my life. Those are the spiritual wickedness in high places. Put on the whole armor of God. For you wrestle not. See, if you haven't been wrestling, you haven't been fighting. If you haven't been wrestling, see, sometimes we don't like to wrestle. Sometimes we just want this Christian road to be easy. And we just want to do what we do and do how we do. But every now and then, you're going to have to wrestle. See, that's why I respect Jacob. Because Jacob wrestled all night long. He wrestled with the angel until God changed his name. He said, I won't let go till you bless my soul. I, I, I know I'm going to have this limp, but this limp actually is going to prove I've been with God. This limp is actually going to prove that I was with you all night long. This limp is going to actually prove that not only did you touch me, but I touched you. This limp, see, you keep worrying about God touching you, but when is the last time you touched God? Oh, 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 now I feel my help in the room. When is the last time that you took your time to touch God? The woman with the issue of blood pressed in. We don't press in. We want to pray five minutes and we want to get up and we think it's magic. Listen to me. I believe in an immediately and a straight way. But listen, the count of faith that it takes for immediately and straight way don't come in five minutes. Because while you sitting there thinking and wrestling, is God going to do it? Somebody will walk up and say, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. We gotta, we gotta, listen, we bought an Instapot. Listen, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, a lot of times we've been giving microwave, Elder Deontay, examples, but I don't know if you know what an Instapot is. My oldest son bought an Instapot, and what an Instapot does, it was designed to cook something that normally takes five to six hours in an hour's time. 
So when you put your roast on and it normally you let it cook on low all night in the crock pot and the seasoning fell all in it because it cooked all night. Now somebody has tried to expedite the process. Well, that's what we've been doing in the kingdom. We've been trying to do it in an hour and expedite the process. Listen, acceleration is one thing, but even when he accelerates you, you don't skip step. Oh, you didn't catch that. You don't skip, skip, skip steps. You just take them faster, but you still go through the process. Somebody is trying to skip steps, and it's not going to happen. Till you get on your face. It's not going to happen till you cry loud and spare not. It's not going to happen till you pray until you pray. Until you pray again. It's not going to happen until you lay out. It's not going to happen until you turn over that plate. It's not going to happen. We keep wanting stuff overnight. Listen, it takes years to become an overnight success. You didn't catch that. By the time you think somebody came up, they have suffered a while. By the time you think somebody got promoted, they have served on the backside of the mountain. By the time you think, how did they get there? They've been serving the Lord in private. Oh, I wasn't planning on preaching this hard. Oh, acceleration is available, but you're not skipping steps because God needs your character to be intact. Oh, we we not gonna we don't shout on that. Uh, I was talking with my team the other night, and this might seem like it's off test, off topic, but somebody needs to hear this. And we were talking about the gifts of the Spirit. See, the gifts of the Spirit are just that. They are a gift. You know, it's, it means absolutely nothing uh, if that you did it because it didn't come from you. It's not your gift of prophecy. It's the Holy Ghost gift of prophecy. You just opened up your mouth, and he gave you a gift. Over that fruit. That fruit requires work. It's not a gift. That fruit requires relationship. But actually, it's that fruit that balances your gift. It's that fruit that sustains your gift. It's that fruit that determines how far you will go with your gift. Hallelujah. The gifts. Everybody wants the gifts. Everybody wants to be called a prophet. Everybody running around wanting a title. And God is saying, where's your fruit? He spoke through a donkey. So don't think more highly of yourself if he you speak through you. He speaks through whoever he wills. He speaks through whomever he wills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fruit were sent to balance the gift. That's why in the Old Testament, when the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he had his robe on, there was symbols and fruit. A symbol and a fruit. A symbol and a fruit alternate around the edge and the hem of his garment. That's exactly what it is in the New Testament. That's why Corinthians said, if you have not love, though you prophesy like angels and have not love, you are like a tingling symbol because there is no fruit. So all we hear is noise. And we've confused noise with the sound. Come on. We've confused noise. Oh, I'm, I don't even know if we're going back to my text now. We've confused noise with the sound. That's why we don't know the difference between the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ than motivational speaking because we have confused the noise with the sound. We confused it. We confused the noise with the sound. See, it's a sound. It's a sound that was on the day of Pentecost. It's a sound. It's a sound. It's a sound when heaven hits earth. It's a sound that even correction feels like love. It's a sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have confused the noise. Hallelujah. Ah, Rabbi Shehete. With the sound. With the sound. We wrestle not 
against flesh and blood. We got to stop wrestling against people. We got to stop wrestling. Listen to me. The enemy wants to wear out the saints. According to Daniel 7 and 25, 2020 has been a year. I'm going to preach this later, but I'm going to tell you preachers out there, don't steal my topic, but I'm still going to put it out there. 2020 has been a year of disruption, and every disruption has caused an interruption that eventually is causing an eruption. But what I'm here to tell you today, that we wrestle not with all all these principalities and powers listen we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and the Bible says that all the principalities are under his feet so if they're under his feet and you're seated in him then they're under your feet if you're seated in him then they're under your feet somebody put me a chair right here if you're seated in him see some of us are not seated when you seat, you take a position of rest some of us have been fighting for things that we weren't supposed to fight for some of us have been striving and toiling and God said no more toil no more toil See, when you're fighting against the kingdom of darkness, that's one thing. But the enemy that's trying to wear you out, that fight that's in your mind, that fight, that mental health demon that is getting out of control. And COVID-19 has unleashed fear like never before. A spirit of fear has been unleashed and people are accepting it and inviting it in. But see, I'm seated in heavenly places. So that spirit of fear is under my feet. When it's under my feet, it can't touch my head. Seated. Seated. So you don't know the benefit of being seated. You don't know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. You don't understand that Jesus is not getting up doing anything else. When he gets up, he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. You don't understand that when he said it is finished, that he went and sat down at the right hand of his Father. And it is the hand of power. Seated. Hallelujah. Seated. You don't understand what it means to be seated. Seated, it don't matter about the election because I'm seated. Seated, it don't matter about what the stats say because I'm seated. Seated, it don't matter about the doctor's report because I'm seated. I'm in heavenly places. You see me on earth, but I'm actually seated in heaven. You see me down here, but I'm actually seated by the right hand of the Father. Seated. He said, it is finished. It is finished. What was finished, Elder Tawanji? Your salvation was finished. Your financial breakthrough was finished. Your healing was finished. The generational curse was finished. The racism was finished. We annihilate and destroy the enemy because we see it in heavenly places. Every time I stomp my foot, I'm stomping the back of the enemy. I'm stomping the back of the devil. Every time I put my foot down, I'm seated in heaven. Seated. Seated. It's only certain things you can do while you're sitting down. Seated. I can pray while I'm sitting down. I can read my word while I'm sitting down. I can fast while I'm sitting down. But I'm not getting in no fight with you because I'm seated. Oh, hallelujah. Seated. Seated. Listen, he, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. When Jesus is seated, I'm seated. Hallelujah. Somebody need to sit a while. Somebody need to sit a while. Because when you sit a while, it'll happen like the day of Pentecost. They were in one place and they were seated in one accord. And the, the Bible says that there were cloven tongues that sat on each of them. There's a benefit to being seated. You want to stand and be seen, but I'm going to sit. Hallelujah. 
so he can sit on me. Sit on me, Holy Ghost. Sit, Holy Ghost. Brood over this world again. Sit, Holy Ghost. Do like you did in Genesis when the Spirit of the Lord moved over the face of the deep. Sit, Holy Ghost. Sit on America. Sit on Texas. Sit on Dallas. Sit on DeSoto. Sit on Duncanville. Sit on Fort Worth. Sit on Garland. Sit on Mesquite. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, sit, Holy Ghost. Brood over this place. To that spirit of murder that's been unleashed in Dallas has to bow to the authority of the Christ. Sit. Sit until the church become unified. Sit until we're not identified by political parties. Sit until we are identified by the blood of Jesus. Sit. Sit until husbands go home. Sit until wives go home. Sit until wayward children come back. Sit. Sit till the kids come back. Sit till the kids surrender. Sit till they submit. Sit till they repent. Sit. Sit. Sit till the witch got to leave. Sit till the warlock got to leave. Sit to everybody who's speaking the curse got to leave. Sit, Holy Ghost. I heard you, Lord. <laughs> Sit until the psychic becomes a prophet. Sit, God, in the name of Jesus. Until the medium bows to the authority of Jesus. Sit. Sit, Lord. <laughs> Sit Sit in the name of Jesus. Sit until the hospitals are empty. Sit until the hospitals are empty. Sit until the people in the nursing home. Oh God, sit until the people in the nursing home are healed in the name of Jesus. You promised that their latter days would be greater than their former days. Sit, God. Sit until everybody in the prison is saved. Sit until the officers stop raping the women. Sit until, God, we have just laws. Sit until you release everybody that has been locked up unjustly. Sit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sit until the wind comes. And when the wind comes, it's going to dry up COVID-19. When the wind comes, every conspiracy theory's got to bow to the name of Jesus. Sit. Hallelujah. 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 Sit. Hallelujah. 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 Sit until grandmothers are grandmothers again. Sit until women have their identity in you again. Sit until men begin to look like men and, and women begin to look like women. Sit, God, until we bow to your authority. Sit on us, God. Oh, my God, Sit. Sit until the spirit of the Antichrist has to bow. Sit, we drive back the spirit of the Antichrist. Sit, God, sit, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us in the name of Jesus. Sit. Sit until we wrestle with you over our purpose. Sit until we don't leave you until you bless our soul. Sit until we make our house a habitation of the Lord. Sit. Sit, God. 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 Sit. Sit in New York. Sit in California. Sit in Florida. Sit in New York. Sit in New Jersey. Sit in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, Tennessee. Sit, Lord. Sit in the United States of America. Sit on the White House. Sit on the schoolhouse. Sit on the church house. Sit on my house. Sit on your house. Sit, God. Sit until we have police reform. 
sit until every crooked lawyer turns in their credentials. Sit, God, until every cop that has a wrong agenda is exposed. Sit, God, until you turn the kingdom of this world into the kingdoms of our God. Sit. 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 Sit until revival hits this land. Sit until revival hits this land. Sit until the spirit of repentance breaks out. Sit until the spirit of repentance. Lord, I ask you to sit on every church, every pastor, every denomination, every creed, every doctrine. Sit on them, God, until we're one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one sound. Sit on us, Lord. Sit in this room, sit at Parkland, sit at Baylor Scott and White, sit at Cook's Children, sit God at every hospital all over this land, sit God, Father God, we unleash your angels of protection, we unleash your healing virtue. God, we ask that you go down the hallways, begin to heal people that don't even know your name, begin to confound the doctors. Let it be something cataclysmic that hit the earth today because you sat on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you sit, we call down the fire. We call down the fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost. We stand like Elijah, and we stand in the face of those that don't call upon your name. And we call down fire from heaven. Sit upon us. Fire, consuming fire, consuming fire, consuming fire, purifying fire, 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 shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, sit on the floor, sit on the floor. Sit on us, Lord. Sit on us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 yeah, we need you, Lord, we need you, Lord, Rabbi Soto, oh, sit on us, God, the wind of your spirit, God, fall fresh in this place, fall fresh in the anointing, fall fresh all over this land, fall fresh, fall fresh, fall fresh, hallelujah. 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 Fall fresh on us, Lord. Fall fresh on us, Lord. I know I'm hoarse. Fall fresh on us, Lord. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Sit on us, Lord. Sit, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sit on us, Lord. 
we fall down before you. Yeah, thank you, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, yeah, yeah. Drop it all at his feet right now. We drop it at your feet, Lord. We drop anxiety at your feet. We drop depression at your feet. We drop unforgiveness at your feet. We drop bitterness at your feet. We drop anger at your feet. We drop the spirit of fear, God. Sit on us, God. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, we're going to be strong in the power of your might. Sit on us, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, oh, God. Sit on us, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Sit on us until we're one sound. Sit on us until we're one people. Sit on us, God, until we call on the name of the Lord to purify us, Lord. Oh, sit on us, Lord. Oh, God, we surrender. Oh, God, I repent. Oh, God, I give it to you. Oh, God, I lay it down. Oh, God, oh, God, sit on us, God. Hallelujah. Sit on us, Holy Spirit. Sit on this earth. Sit on the United States. Sit on the United Kingdom. Sit on Belgium. Sit on France. Sit on God in the name of Jesus, Mexico. Sit on the Bahamas. Sit on Jamaica. Sit on Africa, God. Sit on South Africa, God. Sit on us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody needed some strength today. Yeah, somebody needed. I'll finish this teaching letter. But he said somebody needed to be strong in the power of his might. You've been trying to put on the whole armor without his strength. You've been trying to do the work of the ministry without his strength. You've been trying to preach without his strength. You've been laying hands without his strength. You've been even counseling people without his strength. But today, 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 he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Sit on the sky, Rabashata. Sit on us, God. Sit on us, God. Sit on us until the prophets only speak when you speak. Sit on us until the preacher only preach when you say preach. Sit on us until the prophet only speak when you say speak. Sit on us, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray now by the body of Christ that we will become one in you. Sit on us, God. Hallelujah. 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 I, I, I know it don't look like it. But I heard him say the disruption was for our good. I know it don't look like it. And, and I lost family members too to COVID-19. But we wouldn't hear the Lord. I know it don't look like it. But he had to set us down and put us in time out. So he could hear from him. Sit on us, Lord. Speak, Holy Ghost. Speak, Lord, in the first Baptist. Speak in second Baptist. Speak in church of God in Christ. Speak in full gospel. Speak in non-denominational. Speak in the Southern Baptist. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak Holy Ghost. Speak love. Speak in the Methodist church. Speak in the Episcopal church. Speak Lord. Speak in the Seventh-day Adventist church. 
speak in the church of the latter day of saints of Jesus Christ. Speak. Speak to the Mormons, God. When they open up their mouth, let there be a sound that they know not their heart. Speak in the Catholic Church. Speak, Lord. I'll tear down every wall of division. Tear down every strife. Everything that is wounding the body of Christ. We are annihilated by the Spirit of God. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Some church tomorrow is going to have a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they don't even know how he showed up. But we praying him on in. We praying him in. We agreeing with somebody in that church that's been praying for our poor and other spirit. And we pushing it in. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak to the bishops. Speak to the pastors. Speak to the apostles. Speak to the prophets. Speak to the teachers. Speak to the evangelists. Speak to the missionaries. Speak, Lord. 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 Speak in the Pentecostal church. Speak in the sanctified church. We tear down every wall of religion and every bit of tradition and say, Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak in the church of God. Speak in the church of God in Christ. Speak, Lord. Oh, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yeah, Rabasso. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Have your way. Church unusual. Disrupt the program. Disrupt the psalmist. Disrupt the preacher. Disrupt what we put together. Disrupt the runner show. Speak. Speak in the black church. Speak in the white church. Speak in the biracial church. Speak in the Hispanic church. Speak in the Asian church. Speak in the Indian church. Speak love. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak, Lord. Rabbi Shehete. Speak, Lord. Rabbi Shata. Till people are healed. Until demons tremble. Speak, Lord. We call down your fire. We call down your fire. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak to everyone in this room begins to do what you call them to do. We got a room full of prophets. And I'm about to say, this is a company of prophets in this room. Speak, Lord, until every prophet lay down their agenda and pick up your agenda. Speak, Lord, until the prophet only speak, till you say speak. Father God, stir up the gift on inside of each one of them and allow them not to just have gifts, but to bear fruit. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak until we become a balanced body of believers. Speak. Oh, Rabasata. We ask for the spirit of wisdom. We ask for a word of wisdom, a supernatural response to a natural problem. We ask for a word of wisdom. We ask for a word of wisdom. 
We ask for a word of wisdom because your word says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of you and you will give it to us liberally. We need a word of wisdom for COVID-19. We need a word of wisdom for the White House. We need a word of wisdom for the body of Christ. We need a word of wisdom. Come on, Holy Ghost. Oh, he gonna speak today. Oh, he gonna speak today. You can keep your mouth closed if you want to, but he gonna speak today. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, speak, Holy Ghost. Speak, Lord. Come on, come on, Holy Ghost.
Does anyone have the interpretation of the word that went forth? Of the prophetic word that went forth? Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Elder Erica, grab one of the mics. Hallelujah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray, Elder. Rabashe ata. We exalt yeah, you, Lord God, and we yeah, glorify yeah, yeah, yeah. you, God. We thank you, O oh God, for the word that you've sent forth in the earth, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because you sat on us in this place today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for your word, God. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we exalt you and we magnify you, Lord God. Father, we come before you, Lord God, as a nation, oh God, that is in need of you, God. Yes. We need you, dear God. We need you, God. We need you like we never you, before, God. God. We come to you, Lord God, because you are the God of this nation, oh God. Father, you said that the nation that makes you that your God, that calls you their God, that we're blessed, oh God. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we come before you, Lord God, because you are our God. There is no other God beside you. There is none like you, Lord God. No other God by you, Lord God. None like you, Lord God. You are the true and living God. You are the one God, the only mighty God. Yes. Lord, you are God in the beginning and Come you on, be God pray. in the end. You are God. Without you, there is nothing. Without you, this earth would not be created. Without you, this nation cannot stand. So, Father, I come to you today and we cry out. We cry out on behalf of America, God, because we are desperately in need of you, God. Father, we repent for our sins, oh God. We repent for our evil ways, oh God. We repent, Lord God, for lifting up idols before you, Lord God. Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins and to wash us, to cleanse us of all our unrighteousness, oh God. Father, be merciful unto us, oh God. Lord, we come to you because we are in need of you, Lord God. We are in need of your move, oh God. We are in need of you to sit on us, Lord God. We are in need of you to send word, Lord God. That will transform us, oh God. That will draw us closer to you, Lord God. Father, I pray over this nation, God, as we deal, Lord God, with the coronavirus, oh God, and racial disparity, Lord God. We ask you to have your way. We ask you to have mercy upon us, Lord God. We ask you to forgive us, Lord God, for turning away from you, for turning from your word, and for not seeking your face, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over Hallelujah. each person and ask for your forgiveness, God. We ask you to forgive us, oh God, and to wash us and to cleanse us, Lord God. Father, we repent, oh God. We turn from our wicked ways, oh God. Father, we ask you this morning to hear from heaven, God. Father, you said that when we pray, you hear us, God. Father, we know that when we ask for forgiveness, oh God, it is immediate, God. So, Lord, this morning we ask you to hear from heaven, oh God. We ask you to heal our land, oh God. Not just of sickness, not just of diseases, oh God, but heal us, Lord God. Heal our hearts, oh God. Heal us, Lord God, for the things that we've done, Lord God. Father, I ask you to heal us from sickness and disease, oh God. Heal our minds. Heal our spirit, oh God. Oh God, let us hunger and thirst after righteousness, Lord God. Because you said in your word, 
you, Lord God. Fill us with your spirit, oh God. Baptize us with your Holy Ghost, Lord God. Move like never before in this place. Lord, I call upon your name, oh God, because it is in your name, Lord God, that we are saved, Lord God. Father, you said the righteous run into you and they are saved, oh God. As a nation this morning, God, I ask you to make us righteous, oh God. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over our leaders, oh God, and over our government, Lord God. Father, I pray that you'll raise up righteous people, Lord God, in our government, Lord God. Raise up righteous people, oh God, in our city, Lord God. Raise us right, raise up righteous leaders, oh God, into the companies across this nation, Lord God. We need you, Lord God. Help us to be before you, Lord God. Help us to humble ourselves, Lord God. Help us to seek our faith, Lord God. Father, heal our land. We cry out to you because we are in need of you this morning, God. We need you to move throughout the earth, Lord God. We need you to saturate this nation, oh God. Father, I come against every plan of the enemy to destroy us, oh God. I come against every plan of the enemy, Lord God. And I plead the blood of Jesus, oh God. Father, I pray that you will saturate the atmosphere, Lord God. Help us to train up our children the way they should grow. So when they're old, they will not depart, oh God. Help us to teach our children, Lord God, to seek your faith and to seek your will, oh God. And to walk according to your word, Lord God. Help us not to depart from your priesthood. you Lord God we come to you because you are our father we come to you because without you Lord we can do nothing Lord God we come and we ask Lord God because you said no good gifts would you withhold from us oh God yes so Lord, Lord I ask you to bless us oh God bless I ask us, you to cover us oh God to restore us Lord God yeah, restore this to the nation Lord God that worships you a nation that seeks your face a nation that does your will a nation that obeys your law your rules your precepts oh God Father, you are our God. You are the God of heaven and earth, Lord God, and you are the God that heal, Lord God. Father, heal us of racial injustice, oh God. Father, you saw how this land was built, Lord God. You saw the blood that was spilled, Lord God, and it cries out to you from the earth, Lord God. I yes, ask Lord. you to forgive us, oh God. I ask you to wash us, oh God. Forgive us, Lord God. Heal us, Lord God. Help us to love one another, oh God, as you have loved us, oh God. Help us to be kind, Lord God, and Thank to be you, merciful, Lord God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask you to move like never before. I ask you, Lord God, to show yourself strong, Lord God. I ask you, God, to raise up your people, Lord God, to let your light shine in this earth, Lord God. Help us to go forth speaking your gospel, speaking your truth, teaching others how to serve you, how to live according to your will, how to walk uprightly, how to seek your face, God. Father, I pray that you will mobilize the church. Help us to go out into this nation, oh God, and take back territories that have been taken, Lord God. Help us to take back our schools, Lord God, to take back marriages, Lord God, to take back our family, Lord God. Have your way in this. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you for healing in our physical bodies. We thank you for healing in our minds. God, we thank you for healing in our brain. God, we thank you that you're balancing the chemicals in our brain, God. God, I thank you for every mental illness that has rised up in this season, every mental illness, every mental person, every person that's mentally ill. God, I thank you for healing. I thank you that you're healing right now. In the name of Jesus, God, I thank you that you're healing our physical bodies. You're healing this temple. God, I thank you that you're... You're healing legs, and you're healing arms, and you're healing necks, and you're healing jaw pains, and you're healing our teeth, and you're healing everything that concerns us. God, I thank you that you're touching our hearts, and you're touching the ventricles, and you're touching our veins, and you're touching the blood flow. God, I thank you that you're healing us. Nothing missing, nothing broken, total healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Y'all come on and pray with me. God, I thank you right now that you're healing us in our minds. Every thought, every high thing exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We cast it down in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you that you're healing us in our mind. Depression and oppression. You cannot have us. God, we thank you for healing and wholeness. God, we thank you for healing us in our mind. Every anxiety attack, every panic attack. Thank you for healing us. Every childhood trauma. God, we cast down that trauma. Every thought that comes up about the trauma. Every person that's been misused and abused. God, I thank you that you're healing them right now in the name of Jesus. Every person that was touched inappropriately, God, I thank you that you're healing them in their minds in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now that you're touching our minds. Hey, 
Heal us in our minds, God. Heal us in our minds, God. Because it's with our minds that we serve you. The warfare is over our minds. And God, we thank you that our mind is whole and is healed. Nothing is missing. We have a mind to serve you. And we thank you. And we give you glory. God, thank you for healing our minds. Woo. Every childhood thing that's trying to hinder you in your adult life, I cast it down. In the name of Jesus, every trauma that's trying to come up in this season, I cast it down. In the name of Jesus, every daddy issue, I cast it down. In the name of Jesus, every mama issue, I cast it down. In the name of Jesus, every church issue, I cast it down. In the name of Jesus, every prophet that prophesied over you wrong, I cast it down. In the name of Jesus, every word curse, every hex, every voodoo spell, every doll, I cast it down. Jesus, you will be whole. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In the mighty name of Jesus, heal our minds and heal our souls. Heal our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I thank you for every lung. I thank you for the body. I thank you that it's lining up and it's functioning the way that you called it to function. In the name of Jesus. Every crooked leg, every crooked arm, every missing limb, I thank you that is growing back supernaturally in the name of Jesus. With your supernatural power, by your supernatural power, every person that has faith to believe that you can and you will. Oh, Shabbat Our bodies are whole in the mighty name of Jesus. Our minds are whole in the mighty name of Jesus. That trauma's got to go. Cast it down. Every thought, every imagination, every thought, and every imagination that does not line up with the word of God, we cast it down right now in the name of Jesus. You are healed. You are healed. For by his stripes, by his stripes, you are already healed from the beginning. So God, I thank you. Hallelujah. We lay that trauma at the altar. We lay that trauma at the altar. We lay that sexual come abuse on, come at the on. altar. Come on, come on, we're gonna lay the trauma at the altar. We lay it at the altar. Come on, come on. We lay, lay it at the altar. At the altar. We lay on, it at the on. altar. Yeah, we give it to you. Come it's on, at your on. feet. Come and on, we're not gonna on. pick it back come up on, again. Come on. We lay it at your feet, come God. On, Lord. Everything come that on. happened five years ago, ten years come ago, on. twenty years ago, thirty years ago. We give it to you. We lay it right here at this altar. In the mighty name of Jesus. We will be whole. We will be healed in our minds. Woo. I don't know who holding on to that trauma. Hold on to that trauma and you're going to get physical healing. Come on. Come on. You depressed because you're keeping on to that trauma. You holding on to that trauma. You anxious and you having that anxiety attack. And you panicking because you holding on to that trauma. Come on, holy God. Somebody did 10 years ago, 5 years ago. The thing they did yesterday in the mighty name of Jesus. I cast it down. I uproot it. I uproot it at the root. We uproot that thing. And we cast it down in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo. We give you praise. We give and you we praise. give you glory. And we give you honor. Come on. 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 We come to you in the name of Jesus because we expect the glory to dwell in our land. We need you, oh Lord God. People are stressed and broken because of their finances, because they can't make their needs. But Father, I'm asking that you send meat, that you send meat to meet needs, that you send the ravens like you sent the ravens to Elijah, that you would send them, God. Send help, God. Send glory. We need you, oh God, in this hour. We need you to bless our storehouses and our barns. We know, Lord, that we don't have to manipulate, but we participate in the kingdom. We thank you, Father, that we will govern our affairs according to your principles, according to your judgment. God, we're asking that you command the blessing, that you will send the blessing upon the works of our hands. God, I'm asking you, God, that you manifest your glory. You delight that we have prosperity. You delight that we prosper, even as our soul prosper. So, God, I'm asking that if there's a disconnect between the prosperity and the soul, that you will heal, set free, and deliver. That you will bring truth, God. That 
that you will bring alignment, that you will bring resources, that you will bring strategy, that you will bring jobs, that you will bring economic fairness, that you will bring economic wholeness, that you will bring wisdom, that you will raise up a man. You said you will bring a man from a foreign country to bring about your will. Come on, that you will raise up somebody that will act on your behalf for the cry of your people. I ask that you release the financial burdens. I ask that you will release the increase. I ask you, oh Lord God, that you will send help now, Lord. That you will release glory now, Lord. That you will manifest your glory now, Lord. We need you now, Lord. It is time for you to act, Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. We call on the name of Jesus. We stand on the authority of your word. That is your riches and glory. It's your riches and glory. It's your riches and glory. It's your riches and glory, Jesus. We call on you, Jesus. We call on you. There's no other name I know. There's no other name I know. Oh, we need you. We need you, God. We ask you, Father God, that if there's lack in the spirit, that you will manifest that you will show it up, that we will not lack in the natural. If we're lacking wisdom, if we're lacking discernment, shift us into alignment, oh God. Take away the burden from your people. Hear the cry of your anointing. I stand in proxy for your people. Oh, release the burden, Jesus. Release your burden, Jesus. Release your glory, Jesus. Release your power, Jesus. Release the anointing, God. For it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Have mercy on your people, God. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I'm asking you for restoration. I'm asking you for redemption. Come on. I'm asking you, oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I stand in proxy today. Lord, hear the word of your servant. Hear the cry and the supplication of your people. God, we need you. Oh, come. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oba Shehata. Oba Sata. Kamira, Raba Shehete. As soon as you touch that mic, Aba say, Oba say, under Raba Shata. Oh, I speak to your belly, Kamira, in the name of Jesus. Open up your mouth, woman of God, and prophesy if you have been commanded. In the name of Jesus, I know what your prayer point was. But today, the tool of your mouth, the sword God is going to put in your mouth, is going to destroy the back of the enemy. Open up your mouth and prophesy. Handle that mic. Praise Walk it out. Praise God. Walk it out. Praise God. Walk it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Come on. We going today all the way. Come on, come on. If I so too. Yeah. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray for the children and for the school systems. Come on. I'm going to speak first. For God is saying that there is fear. Come on. And there is love. Come on. There is fear and there is love. Come on. And perfect love Come casts on. that fear out. So if anyone is afraid, if you are fearful in this moment, Come on, Holy remember Ghost. his love. Believe God. his love. Have you ever known a love like his love? Come on. The love that you think you receive from a parent. The love that you think you receive from a child. Greater than that. Greater, Greater than, that. than that. His love will His cast love. out all this fear. Do not forget what he has done for you. We Come cannot on. forget what he has done for us. Come on, Holy Ghost. He loves us. He loves us. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Are you afraid? Because if you're afraid, do you believe his love? Come on. Do you believe his love? Remember that. Remember his love. What did he do for us? What did he do for us? Have we been able to do that for anyone? Come on. Would we do that for anyone? We think we would. We're actually incapable of it. Thank you, Jesus. No fear. Fearlessness. Fearlessness is the word that he's given me. Come on. Fearlessness. Fearlessness. Fearlessness for your household. Come on. Fearlessness for yourself. Fearlessness for those who you see. Just Thank walking by those that are in That's the hospital it. right now. Those Thank you, Jesus. No one is beside them. No one is by their side. No one can be. Be strong for them. See them strong. That's what we need to do. We need to see each other as strong. 
We cannot look at each other as weak and expect healing. Because once I believe that you believe I'm weak, I might believe I'm weak. <laughs> and in hallelujah, his love, his love, that's where our strength lies. And it casts out fear, all fear. So Father God, I just want to pray right now. what is needed. You know what is needed for this school system, Lord. You know the strategy that you are downloading to those who have an ear to hear. And for those who have an ear to hear, allow them to open up their mouth and actually speak what they have heard, God. God, we ask that you just con just wipe it out, Lord. The, the way, the old way that they think that they're going to come in now and do this new thing, let them know that that's not it. That is not it. There is a new way for things to be done right now. There is a new way. And we hold the strategy. We hold the strategy. He is downloading it in us. Let us go forth and speak it, God. Let us go forth and speak it, God. If there's anyone walking in fear of opening their mouth to, to send out the strategy to those in high places, God, we break it right now. We break that fear right now, God. Let them know that the old way is no more. The old way is no more. It's time for a new thing in all areas of our life, in all areas of this world. It's time for a new thing. God, we love you, and we thank you for loving us, and we thank you for loving our children, Lord. We thank you for caring so much about our children, Lord. We know that you are with them right now, God, and we know that you can lift them up in this time that seems so hard and so difficult for them, where they, where some of them, A students are becoming C students, God. We know that you can do a new thing, God. You can do a new thing in their minds and in their hearts. Protect them, Lord. Lift them up. Let them know that they are beautiful and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. That they can do all things through Christ. They are strong, God. Raise up these children. Let them, them know up. who they are in you, God. Help them to know who they are in you, God. Help their parents to know. Help their parents to learn a new thing that they maybe didn't learn when they were younger. God, teach their parents now as their parents help the children learn. God, we just ask that you wipe out every bit of confusion in this school system right now. Wipe it out. Wipe out every bit of confusion, Lord. We ask that you bless those teachers, cover those teachers that are standing inside of those classrooms, putting their life in danger, God. We ask that you cover these kids that go home to some elderly grandparents or people in their household, God. We ask that you cover their household, Lord. May COVID not reach them. But as they sit there and learn, Lord, we know that some of them are struggling with needs they may not even come forth and speak about God. Some of them are struggling because they can't get the food they need. Some of them are struggling because of the atmosphere, the parents are confused, the parents are scared, they're stressed out, God. Change the atmosphere in the home, God, so that the children can learn right now, Father. God, if there be anything happening and taking place in the household right now that is not of you, we ask that you shed light on it. If there is any child right now suffering from any form of abuse, may it be physical, mental, or emotional, God, we ask that, you, ask that you shine light on it right now, Lord. Break that chain. Break that child free. Bring forth someone that will be able to look in their eyes and know what's going on, Lord. Child abuse has risen in this time, God. And we know that these are your children, Lord. You love these so we ask that you cover them, protect them, God. Bring the right people. Protect them, God. Protect them, God. Change the heart of the abuser, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. May the heart of the abuser be changed right now. May we not turn a blind eye to something that may be going on right in front of us. 
yeah, parents, grandparents, may we not turn a blind eye for something that may be going on right in front of us. And may we not be the reason that a child needs to recover later on with trauma. God, we ask that you just bring forth healing over our family. Healing, God, allow these kids to learn. Teach them a new way. A new way, Lord. A new way. A new way. In the name of Jesus, pray, April. Pray, Minister Bowman, pray. Pray in the name of Jesus, pray. Pray in the name of Jesus, pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth wide and allow him to fill it. Pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We thank you, Father, right now yes, for Lord. being our help, God. We thank you for being present, for being our refuge, God. I thank, thank you, you for Jesus. filling us in this place. I thank you for answering our prayers that we thank even you, know Jesus. to ask, God. I thank you that you have sent your healing, God, through the airways. You have sent your healing, Lord. In this place, God, you have healed our mind. You have healed our emotions. You have Come healed on. our soul. You have Come healed on. our spirit. You have given us strength, Come God, on. to run Come this race longer. Pray. I thank Give you for bringing all of our spirit, I thank you, Lord, yeah. that you are filling us with thank more you, Jesus. Of you. you are filling your might and your strength, God. You're filling us with your glory, God. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we don't have to do it alone, God. I thank you, God, that as we cry out to you, Lord, you are with us. I thank you that you are answering our call. I thank you that you are touching our families. I thank you you are covering our children, God. I thank you right now, God, that you are healing every hurt, God, Jesus. every broken place, God, every place where the enemy has tried to tell us a lie and make us believe that we were not worthy of your love, God. We cast that down right now in the name of Jesus. Name and we lose Jesus. your truth right now to just in penetrate every lie, to come against every lie, for us to open our eyes and see and receive what you say about us, God. I thank you that we shall no longer, we shall no longer be tossed to and fro, thinking that we are not yours, thinking we are not loved, God. I just speak to our identity, Lord, and say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you have created us, Lord, in your image and in your likeness, God, and that you did so out of love, and that you so love us, God, that you gave your only begotten son, that you will, we will, none of us shall perish, God, that you want us to be in your presence. You want us to be in relationship with you, God. So I thank you, Lord, that you are renewing us. You are setting us free. Thank you, God, for whom the son says free is free. Indeed, you are freeing our mind. You are freeing our soul. You are freeing our identity, Lord, to serve you and to receive your love, God. So we just lift our hands and say, God, we receive. We receive. We receive it, God. We receive, we receive what you say about us, God. We receive, Lord, that you have been given us. You've given us access, that you've given us the keys to your kingdom. We receive it, God, that we are the head and not the tail. We receive it, God, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We receive it, God. We receive it, God. We receive our healing. We receive your love, God. We receive it, Lord. We receive the position you have set us in heavenly places. We receive it, God. That it's not just for everyone else, Lord, but it's for us too. So, Lord, we just lift our hands and say, thank you, God, for seeing us. Thank you, thank God, you, for Lord. loving us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Jesus, for calling us. Thank you for shaping us, God. Thank you for making us more into your image and your likeness every day, God. I thank you, Lord. You're giving us the mind to receive you. You're giving us a heart to receive you in the name of Jesus, God. We cast down every lie, every fear, every doubt, every insecurity, every spirit of suicide, every anxiety, every ounce of depression. We cast it down right now at the right name now, of Jesus. In the name we of bind Jesus. it at the root and we loose that you shall live and not die in the name of Jesus. We loose, Lord, that you are moving, that you are renewing, that you are resurrecting by your power, by your spirit, by your love. So, Lord, we just invite you into our lives, into our home, into our hearts, into our homes right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Illuminate every dry place, every dark place, every hidden place, every secret place, every place where we held on to Hallelujah. that was not of you and was sent by the enemy to make us confused. We yes. bind confusion. We bind confusion. We bind confusion. And we lose order. We lose identity. We thank you, God, that you are doing something so new in us. 
we receive the new thing in the name of Jesus. We, we embrace the new thing in the name of Jesus. God, give us the mind of you. Renew our minds. I thank you, God, that we no longer have to be conformed to this world, God, but you are transforming us by the renewing of our minds. God, give us a renewed mind to receive who we are in you. No longer shaken. No longer confused. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. We believe it. And we praise you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Play another verses of that. I love you, Jesus. the Lord has been with us today. Surely the Lord has heard our cry as we bring our session of prayer to close. I just want to remind you all that are watching. I know people get on at different times. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, hallelujah. Um, someone will put in the comments, but it is Cash App, Christy Dobbins, Zale, Christy Dobbins at Yahoo. PayPal, Christy Dobbins at Yahoo, and it is Venmo, Christy Dash Dobbins. I thank you all for tuning in. We're not quite finished yet. I don't know. It's a word in this room. Uh, it's a word hanging in the balance in this room that has to go forth before we leave. Uh, so I'm just doing what I do while I'm thinking about it. If you have not taken the art of hearing, the art of hearing class, the last class of the year starts on, on November 30th. And it's not to say that you haven't heard God already, but it is to fine tune your hearing with the Lord. And, and, and this is a season and time where many voices are saying they've heard from God. It's a season of time where many voices are vying for your attention and God is asking you to come back and prepare a place for him to hear him. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, minstrel, come on. Oh, there's a word in the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The mics have already been sanitized. Whoever has the word of the Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She can't come and not sing. Come on, Missy. Come on, hallelujah. See, this is when it gets good right here. This is when we switch to that after party in the spirit. You got to know where we're going right now. Come on, Missy.
I want you to walk this room. And as you walk this room, the outer perimeter of this room, I want you to walk this whole room. Walk behind her. So if she falls, you will catch her. But I want you to walk this room. Every step you take, the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Every step you take, the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Every step you take, the devil is a liar. God is exalted. Every step you take. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. Every step you take. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, but I'm so tired. The devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Rabat, say, hey. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. He'll never be defeated. He'll never be defeated. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it is. God come on, they're about show to. Yeah, come on, say hey to. Yeah, oh, God is exalted. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. Never be. Never be. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, he in the room. Whatever I say, he'll talk. Oh, deliverance is in the room. Oh, are we breaking the back of the devil right now? Oh, we breaking the back of the enemy right now. Oh, he's in the room. He's in the room. She said, I'm going to be in a room. She came to get help. If you came to get help, help is in the room. Be ye strong in the power of his might. She came to get help. Help is in the room today. Shall never, never be defeated. Hallelujah. And because God. Because God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, Elder Deer. Come on, Elder Deer. Oh, it's almost there. Uh -huh. Let Elder Deer. Come on. 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 want to know what a midwife look like? That's what a midwife look like. They tarry till you get your breakthrough. Oh, we ain't finished working today. Vanessa, come to the middle of the aisle. Oh, everybody getting help on today. Because the enemy wants us to think we alone. Come on, Tracy. Come on, April. Get behind her in the name of Jesus. Stop right there, Rachel. Oh, Lord, I say, I'm going to go to the house. Oh, Lord, I say, I'm going to go to the house. Oh, Lord, I I'm not going to lay hands. I'm going to speak the word. I'm not going to lay hands. I'm going to speak the word. Oh, Lord, I say, I'm going to go to the house. Oh, Lord, I say, out of your belly. Out of your belly. Out of your belly. I bind every other thought. Every other word that the enemy has said out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You are who he said you are. You will open up your mouth and prophesy. You will get back into alignment. And once you get back into alignment, everything else is going to line up. Whatever the hindrance is, whoever the hindrance is, whatever the block is, in the name of Jesus, we bind it in the name of Jesus. And we loose your freedom in the Holy Ghost today. Today, come on, Vanessa. What about While we praying in here, we hope you praying out there. 
everything the enemy thought he stole from you, everything he lied about. We want you to know that the devil is a liar and God is undefeated. The power of the true and the living God is meeting you right now in your house. He's meeting you right now in your car. He's meeting you right now on your job. That ain't it. Come on, Pastor John. Come on, Pastor John. I'm Vanessa, stand right there. That ain't it. We going all the way in. That ain't it. That ain't it. You got to go in. Reba, show. Reba, say on the road. I don't want you to feel like you left out. That's why we praying in here. The Holy Ghost is there with you. There is no distance in the spirit. What God is doing in this room, he'll do it in your room. If you make room for the Holy Ghost. Ever be defeated. And because God is the greatest power. it is you need it's in the room don't leave this room without what you need help is in the room we've been separated but we are now today fitly joined whatever you need is in the room whatever you need is over the airways whatever you need don't leave here without this remember I started off telling you it's gonna require your participation we can't give it to you you've got to receive it receive the spirit of the Lord whatever you need it's in the room if you need healing it's in the room if your family needs restoration it's in the room whatever you need is in in the room. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's here, it's here. It's here, it's here, it's here. It's here, it's here. It's in the room. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's worship him. that's in this room, hanging in the room. Who has the word? Yes, God. Before we leave, who has the word? Ooh, comes the glory of the Lord. He's 
Issues. Hallelujah. You have to stand in front of the camera. Everybody say, Oh, Toroda Bashata. Hallelujah. Closing the gap is for women, y'all. We had a couple of men that snuck in during COVID 19. Here comes the glory. Come on. Come on. Come on, Pastor All over Josh. This room, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come on. Here comes the glory. Come on. Here comes the glory. Wherever you are, lift your hands. Come on. Here comes the glory. Here comes. Here it comes. Here comes the glory. Come on, come on. Here comes the glow. 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 Pour it out. single person in here and every single person online if there's a sickness in your body come on I don't care what it is I don't care if it's an STD I don't care if it's COVID if there's a sickness in your body come on put your hands right there come on put your hands right there even in this room come if on there's a sickness in your body come on put your hands right there come on just heal If you have a family member with a sickness, touch yeah. that place. Yeah. Just heal. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Thank Lord, you. Jesus. Thank you, hallelujah. If you're in this room and I see just lift your hands up. Jesus. Lift your hands up. Right your right hand up or your left hand where it hurts. Your right hand up or your left hand where it hurts. Just heal.
Ahead, Pastor Davalos. Hallelujah. Thank you, Chief. Closing the gap is not just a service, I think it's a movement. I've really sacrificed to be here to support my bride. I think God is using her in a tremendous way. I'm sitting in the cut, as we would say. And I think sometimes we're married so long, but not physically, spiritually. But there's a connection here. And the Lord sat on me when he took me to to the book of Revelation, chapter number 10, verses 1 and 2. It's a little heavy, but I'll make it simple. The Apostle John has already talked about the trumpets. The seven trumpets, the last several trumpets were full of terror. Then the angel is about to introduce the seven thunders. We never fully find out about all of the seven thunders because God told the Apostle John to seal it up. Don't, don't explain it. I don't know how much time I have, but in a few moments that I've been allotted, I'll be honest with you, I've tried to explain it. <laughs> I've tried to understand it. And this is not, the, I don't know who this is for, but this is not the season for you to understand what you're going through. The word the Lord gave me in the cut in the corner was that you've been crying too long. If I were preaching a sermon, how he gave it to me is you're on your way to get your crown, but you're crying. You wouldn't think that you would be crying on your way to get something that honors you, but in the process being pushed through life there is a crushing I said, how in the world does this tie in the Holy Ghost sat on me and he said this angel came down from heaven the Bible is clear the Bible is clear it's clear you're watching online it's clear the angels head was covered in a rainbow it was a rainbow above its head the angel was clothed in a cloud rainbow cloud clouds are typically white it says the angel's face was like the sun this is the angel the bible says the angel's feet was like a pillar of fire and then it said one miraculous thing that this angel had a little book in his hand and the angel, the Bible clearly says that the left foot was on land and the right foot was on the sea. And 
I said, Holy Ghost, talk to me. What are you saying? He said, I told you my people have been crying too long. They've been crying so long that they created a crutch. And because you created a crutch, you cannot speak to your crisis. You're on your way to get the crown. You're crying. You cried too long. You created a crutch. And now you can't handle the crisis in front of you. The crutch is because you've been crying about a past hurt. But he's trying to take you to the future in which you're going to experience more hurts, which is the crisis. You can't get the crown if you don't stop crying and get off the crutch and face the new crisis that's in front of you. And the Lord started talking to me and he started saying that some of you need to look at how you were hurt again <laughs> and to look at it from a different vantage point and a different angle. And he began to tell me that the Bible says, Job says, Job 23, 9 and 10. And so it says, it will try it and I'll come, I'll come forth as we normally say pure gold, but it's just gold. But it says on the left hand of he work, the left hand, the left side always means weakness in the scripture. Weakness. It says the angel's left foot was on land. Weakness was on land. It says the right foot, the right hand always symbolizes power. Come on, I got preachers and teachers in the room. The right side is power. The right side was on the sea. You're missing it right there. So the right side was on something that was shaky, and the left side was on something that was solid. And that's where you messed up. Because everything that you put a crutch for, that you've been crying over, that you can't face the crisis on your way to the crown, you created a crutch for it, and it's supposed to be the weakness, but God put it on land. God says, he said, I put the weakest part of you on something that's stable. I put the strongest part of you on something that's weak, that seems like it's going to drag you down. Oh, you missed it right there. That's what I'm saying to you right now. This left side represents your flesh. This right side represents your spirit. And the problem is every time God's getting ready, he's getting ready to bless you and take you to another level. The weak side of you starts going out and you start crying over something that was meant to help you create stability. The left side is on fertile ground and the right side is on something that's unstable. In this season, I'm telling you, I prophesy a reverse and a turnaround. You've been taking the thing that's powerful and putting it on something powerful. Uh, God said, uh-uh. I need you to take the very gift that I gave you and put it on something that you think you can't handle. I need you to take the thing that you thought was weak and put it on something strong. That's what's getting ready to happen. There's going to be a crossover blessing. There's getting ready to be a switch. Everything you thought that was wrong with you, it's actually right with you. Everything that you thought was a deficit is really a destiny moment. Everything that you thought was pulling you down is actually taking you up. No wonder Jesus was able to walk on top of water because he's walking on top of things that pulled other people down. He's walking on top of something that's shaky because he's using his power and his strength. He's able to walk as if it's land because there was no weakness in him. But your assignment is to take the thing that you thought was weak that's pulling you to one side and stand up as if it's fertile ground. Stop making excuses for the weakness or the challenge that you think you have. I'm sorry, it's not put together. I just got it in the last three minutes. But I'm telling you, you're on your way to receive a crown, but you've been crying over past hurt. So much so that you've created a crutch. God says, I never, I never meant for that to be a crutch. I meant for that to be something stable. The angel is about to give the seven thunders. <laughs> You missed it. She's asking who's got a word to prophesy. She's asking who's got a word. The angel is getting ready to give a word that we don't even understand what the word is because it's getting ready to be walked out. If you're in 2020, it has been the longest decade ever, and it's supposed to be a year. That's because we don't know what's next. The seven, hear me good, the seven thunders are at the door. We don't know what's around the corner. Stop taking life for granted as if tomorrow was promised. There is a prophetic function to function in a crisis that's about to come. Yes, America, there is a crisis to come. Yes, Australia, there is a crisis to come. Yes, Africa, uh, South America, Europe, eight, there is a crisis that is about to come. But God said it's not about the crisis. It's about the crown that's in front. 
And I just want to hear him say, well done, as I try to close. The crown was never for me to wear it. You know, we wear shirts. I got a shirt that says king. We kings and queens. The crown was never for us, us to wear it and show it off. If you read the text carefully in the Old Testament, it was to lay it at his feet. Yes. Oh, yes. that's the problem. So some people, they've been leaning on the weakness, thinking it was a weakness. Some people have been leaning on power, think that they had power. But that's the problem. You're supposed to be laying the crown at his feet. And because you've been standing up in you, you'll never stand up in who God called you to be. You're going to have to stand up in him. How do I know I'm standing up in him? You stand up in him when, uh, when the odds are against you. stand up with him when something that should have been your weak side made you strong. You stand up with him when your challenges turn you into a champion. This is a simple word. And then the Lord started, I, I, I'll leave this because we'll, we'll be here a few hours. The Lord started to talk to me about creativity. You, maybe you're watching online. But I'm selfishly seeing creative gifts in this room. You're so creative, you're so creative that it's ridiculous. But you can't get to the creativity because you're still crying over the past. You can't get to the creativity because you got a crutch. And anytime you use a crutch, it's taking you longer to get to the promise. The creativity is in front of you, which is why God is pushing you forward through all types of crisis in order to get there. I know the, the prophet doesn't give comfortable words. The prophet hears and tells you the truth, not a truth, but the truth. There is a crisis in front of you. But if you never forget, if you forget anything else I said, remember this. In spite of the crisis, God already took your crutch with the cross. He already took your crutch by allowing you to be filled with him. Many of you are trying to be creative and you're wondering why it doesn't work. The business, the book, the dream, the connection, it, it's not working yet because you got to go through the crisis and you cannot go through the crisis as long as you're crying about the past. And as long as you're crying about the past, you'll never understand that God has a crown already set in heaven for you. That's going to honor him and not you. Stop making yourself so big. You better take this mic. Stop making yourself so big. You're not that important. Lord, that's, preachers aren't supposed to say that in 2020. You're not that important. It's not about me. It's not about my bride. It is about Christ in this culture affecting change to create a manifestation of miracle signs and wonders. I think I'm done. Amen. Amen. Say praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> I still sense a word in the room. We are going to close. Is it you, Rachel? Is it you, Joshua? <laughs> Amen. Is you, Kamita? Oh, this prophet coming forth in the name of Jesus. Come on, Faith's mama. The other ones are clean, I think. Already, oh, that's the one. It's fine. Okay. So all I want to say is um, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Bobby, for that. All week, God has been saying something to me, and I really didn't understand it until now. And it was, the crown is heavy, but it fits. And as 
the okay. pastor mm-hmm. just spoke, it was unraveling because I thought it was about me. I thought it was my claim to good. And I think even though it was about me, it may speak to a lot of us. And sometimes we really may think that we are supposed to be wearing this heavy crown. Mm-hmm. But it's not for us to wear it all. It is for us to lay at his feet. It's for him to carry that weight. you were talking what I heard is my yoke is easy and my burden is light that's how when it's when it's God I'm not saying you won't receive opposition you will but it won't weigh it won't weigh what it weighs when it's not God and that's how I gauge when people come talking when it's too heavy it's not God when it's about to break you it's not God his yoke is easy his burden is light it's light because he's carrying it. He, he, you just went and said yes to the yoke and you decided to be obedient and you didn't look back and despise it and walk away from it. And so when you obeyed, his yoke is easy. His burden is light because he is carrying it. It is your obedience to him that causes him to carry it. I think Pastor Dobbins and even what... Um, Minister Kamita said, it it ties in with be strong in the Lord, where we started. And I will continue to teach that whole warfare teaching. I might do it tomorrow night on my Sunday night check-in on IG, um, just to go through that totality of that scripture. But be strong in the Lord. So you don't have to be strong. I don't have to be strong where his strength is made perfect in our weakness. I am going to close, but I didn't know which way I was going to preach this today. And I preached this before. Um, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we all say that, but over time, Life has called us to pick up other weapons. And so the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But because, and this word kept coming up, I can't leave it. Uh, Prophet Tracy prayed on it too hard. Trauma, childhood trauma. The, these weapons that we, the weapon, they don't, we don't think they're a weapon because they start out protecting us. We put up the wall and it looks like it's protecting us. And then we guard ourselves and we shut ourselves off so we don't get hurt enough again. But we think we're, we're doing ourselves a, 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 a service and we think we're doing the right thing, but it actually becomes a weapon against us because whatever I've walled off doesn't allow the Holy Spirit in and it doesn't allow him to penetrate and get in and I preached a sermon one time called drop your weapons drop your weapons the weapons of insecurity the weapons of building up your own wall and protecting yourself the weapons that you built and you created to take care of you today he's saying drop your weapons 
It's like when the police come in and they're getting ready and they pull their weapon on you and you have your weapon and they tell you because they have the power, drop your weapon. Well, God is saying because he has the power, drop your weapon. Your weapons aren't carnal. They don't work over here in the kingdom. They don't work in the kingdom. Your weapon doesn't work in the kingdom. But they are mighty through God. There it is. Mighty. Be strong in his might. Now the weapons are mighty through God. Hallelujah. We thank you all for coming today. We thank you. The next close in the gap is December 12th, I believe. At 10 a.m., we will be streaming live. We don't know from what location. Again, the Art of Hearing, the next class starts on November 30th. The Art of Hearing is for women only. It's $99. It's a four-week class. Um, walking through scripture to hear the word of God, but not just walking through scripture, but also finding out what prevents us from hearing God. And sometimes those are things that we, our weapons, the weapons that we bring over into the kingdom either contaminate our ability to hear him or prevent us from hearing him. Is that my last announcement, Tracy? What's my other announcement? Okay, so for you can register at christydobbins.com. Thank you, Tracy. Um, you can register for the art of hearing at christydobbins.com. Most of you are watching me on Facebook. I did say I will probably finish today's teaching um, tomorrow night on IG when I do my Sunday night check in. Let's say 8 o'clock Central Standard ish. It might be at 8, between 8 and 8 30. Um, but we'll finish that teaching tomorrow night on the Sunday night check-in. All hearts and mind clear. I think you did a marvelous job. And you certainly look spectacular. Mercy, if y'all can see the glory from where I'm standing. But on a serious note, I just want to remind you this week, you're gonna, you'll be facing one of two situations. Either it's the land or it's the sea. When it's the sea and you feel like it's pulling you down or overwhelming you, God's giving you strength and power. When it's a land situation, you feel like everything's going well, that means he's carrying and covering your weakness. God's got you either way. There is no need for you to worry this week and next week and the week after but specifically in the next seven days i see miracle signs and wonders as you lean on the holy ghost and not a crutch that you've created yourself god wants to do something amazing i actually do want to also thank my team elder erica prophet tracy minister april minister kamita and elder tawanji for the prayer that went forth today. Um, thank you for allowing God to use you and being open to the vision that God gave me um, and then being open to when he flipped it. Hallelujah. Um, I thank um, this beautiful church for allowing us to be here. We thank our sister over here for making that possible for us. And um, as we get ready to close, we can all stand. <clears throat> Can we thank God for you? I feel like uh, I feel like Kamala's husband. I feel like Kamala's husband. I'm okay with being the first man. Okay, Kamala's husband. I, I do want you to remember that I said it requires your participation. And I know we have to keep, I'm, everyone that knows me knows I'm big on keeping up with current events. I fussed at my mentees, like I got my friend looking at me. I'm just like, hey, you cannot not know that. 
Like, we need to know because we need to pray. But I also want you to balance it and guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The way that anxiety overtakes us is by what we see and what we hear. And when it's not balanced with the word of God and your prayer time, whatever you feed yourself the most is what's going to guide you and be your compass. We thank God for LaToya, who came all the way from Alabama to worship with us today. And so, yeah, that's LaToya. <laughs> Uh, we thank God for her and for her husband taking care of the four girls at home while she flew out here to come and get refueled. And so, uh, and they're not, they're not girls that are like 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. He's taking care of some little girls. <laughs> so we commend him for that. Um, and we thank you. And I think uh, I said Shy already. Shy drove in from Tyler. And we thank Eniola for coming and blessing us with her gift. I, I, you know, nobody else tried this, but you know, I'm old school. When I just sensed it, I sensed it. I DM'd her Thursday night on, on Instagram. And so I thank God that she was willing and obedient. So I thank the Lord for her faithfulness and for Misi always <clears throat> singing. Whenever she comes, she knows I'm going to throw her the mic. It's just part of what we do. All hearts and mind clear. I'll let Pastor Dobbin, since my voice is finally saying it's finished, <laughs> I will let him bless, um, do the benediction and close us out. Again, the art of hearing, the next close in the gap is December 12th. Um, also, for those of you who are watching, be on the lookout. I'm going to do a one-night teaching in December uh, that will be via Zoom, and I'll send that out. If you want to be a part of that, um, email us. I have to put it on you. Email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at christydobbins.com. Again, I'm going to do a teaching. This month was on the Holy Spirit. Uh, next month, I don't know what that topic will be. And that's just a class that I felt led to, one night class. Um, and so email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at christydobbins.com. And when that email list goes out uh, for the class, you will receive a link to attend the Zoom class. The Art of Hearing in December 12th is the next Closing the Gap. God bless you all. Love you all. Would you graciously bow your heads to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, dominion, and power, world without end, both now and forever. In the mighty name of Jesus, and together as a family, we said, amen. And thank you for the musicians and all the men, if they can help the musicians put the stage back like it was, they'll tell you. Oh, and we do praise out. I'm sorry. I meant to praise out. Uh, I've already, come on, come on. Give us, get on that Hammond B3. We're going to close out in praise. While we setting up and cleaning up, we're going to praise out. Uh -oh.